Welcome to Jaguar Boot Camp, creating a database in Jaguar version 4. The information in this presentation is the property of innovative timing systems. All of this information is confidential and may not be disclosed to anyone outside of innovative timing systems or your own company without written authorization from the president of innovative timing systems. This presentation is only provided to customers who are under a current support agreement that has not expired. In this training module, we're going to be taking a look at how to enter data into the Jaguar system. If you're timing a race, perhaps this Saturday, you're going to want to bring all the data into the system that the race organizer has provided you, typically in an Excel spreadsheet. On screen, you can now see an Excel spreadsheet and this is a very typical file that we might receive from a race organizer or the race director. Let's expand those columns just a little bit so you can see them a little better. There we go. First name, last name, age, gender, and city. Now obviously this is sample data. You would have additional columns typically coming to you. But in this case, we just want to show you quickly how to do an import from an Excel file. First of all, you'll notice on the first row we have the column headers telling us what information is contained in the spreadsheet. That's almost always the case when somebody provides you the file, but if not, we recommend that you put it in there. Just insert a column and label it. It'll make it a lot easier for you in just a moment when you're importing that data. Okay, let's take a look at this file. First of all, it looks fairly straightforward, except there's a couple of things that could get you in a little trouble, so let's cover that. First of all, you'll notice down here there's a comma between Evans and Junior. We don't want any commas in our Excel file when we get ready to import into Jaguar. And the reason for that is that we're going to save it as a CSV file. CSV stands for Comma Separated Values File. And it's what's typically used between programs like databases and spreadsheets and our own software to exchange information. So that comma right there would cause that row to not be written correctly such that Jaguar could understand it. So we need to get rid of it. Now, if you have a very large spreadsheet and you have thousands of entries, you're not going to want to look down for every single comma. So you could, in fact, click right here in this cell. And then I could do a search and replace using the standard function built into Excel. And I would search for every comma and just replace that with a space. That's how easy it is. In our case, we only have the one that we need to fix. So we'll just take it out just as you've seen me do there. Now let's take a look at the second problem. You'll notice over here we have male and then we have M and F for male and female. In Jaguar, we want you to keep that to a single letter. So in this case, I'm going to change male to M and I'm going to fix that. If I wanted to fix uh, the entire column and I had thousands of entries, I could just highlight the column by clicking up here, as you see. I've just done that. And then I could do a search and replace and find all of the females, change it to F, and then change all the males to M and I would automatically clean up that entire column. Now I also have city and that looks fine. I don't see any commas there. Sometimes we'll get city comma state. So again, when we did the search by highlighting the entire spreadsheet uh, for commas, we would have taken care of that as well. All right, the last thing we want to do to fix this spreadsheet before we try to import it is we need to tell Jaguar what kind of a race this is. You'll notice there's no column here that says, for example, 5K. And the reason for that is that the race director is saying to you, well, it's just a 5K, that's all there is, so I'm not going to put that in the spreadsheet. So what you're going to want to do is create a column out here, call it race or division or something like that, and type in 5K or if it's a 10K, whatever the type of race it is. Now, if the race is a 5 and 10K or perhaps even a half marathon, you'll have that division entry or that category, they'll sometimes call it. You'll have that there and so you'll be okay. What you are going to have to do, though, is to make sure that it's not some really long name. Sometimes somebody will say, you know, 5K Memorial Division at the Chesterfield 4th of July picnic. You don't want that. You want to keep these short and sweet. They need to be two or more characters in length, uh, but you want to clean it up so you have like 5K or 10K and not all that extra stuff because it makes it harder to work with. All right, now we've got our spreadsheet here. We're ready to save it, so let's do that. We're going to select File. We're going to then select Save As, and when we do that, it's automatically going to let us ha choose what type of file we want to save it as. And in fact, normally, if it's the first time you've worked with a file, it's probably going to come up as an Excel workbook. We don't want that to be saved as an Excel workbook. We want to save it as a CSV. So I'm going to click this down arrow, 
I'm going to come down to this option, the very first one that's CSV, not this one that says Macintosh or MS-DOS. I want the one just above it that says Comma Delimited CSV. And when I do that, it's going to let me save that out in that format. And you'll notice I'm in my racist folder where I'm storing all my files for my upcoming race this weekend. And I've actually already got the file there. Well, that's okay. We'll just overwrite it. Uh, and we'll save this latest version. And that's important because it's very likely the race director is going to send you two or three files over the course of the last week or two before the event. So I can just save over the top of it, or I could give it a separate name so that I could look back in time to see what the differences were between the files that I received. I'm going to go ahead and say yes, go ahead and replace it. Microsoft Excel is going to give me a little warning message that says, are you sure you want to save this as CSV because it's not a standard workbook? And I'm sure. So I'm going to say yes. Once I've saved that out, then all I have to do is just close out Excel. And in fact, I have to do that because right now Microsoft's got that file locked down. So I'm not going to be able to get to it unless, in fact, I close Excel. So when I get ready to close, it's going to warn me again and say, you want to save this one more time? And I'll say, no, I've already saved it. In fact, I just saved it, so I don't need to do it again. So I'll say, don't have to save it again. All right, now we're back into Jaguar. We're ready to bring that uh, Excel spreadsheet into the software. Well, the first thing I want to do is you'll see I have some information already in my database. So let's get rid of that. I'm going to come up to the database menu option. I'm going to scroll down and there's an option that says clear the database from memory. Anytime you get a warning like this, you need to be sure to read it because it says, are you sure you wish to do this? And then it's going to say again, are you really, really sure? And you want to always read these carefully and say, yes, we've just cleared the entire database out of memory. Now, it hasn't cleared it off the hard drive. That never happens. So once you've saved it to the disk drive, you'll, we will never clear it. If you do, you'd have to do it by using something like the uh, folder and go out and look at the file, the raw file, and delete it there. And Jaguar will never um, automatically delete a file off the hard disk. So you're in good shape if it's still on the hard drive. All right. Now, let's go import that database into Jaguar. I'm going to come up to database again. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to say I want to import that registration data from a CSV or text file. In this case, it's a CSV, so I'll select that option. What you'll now see on screen is the import utility built into Jaguar. And you'll notice it's going to give you a little information here about how the process will work. It's going to give you a file preview and it's going to let you designate the column numbers that you want to use from that Excel spreadsheet. And you'll see more about that in just a second. Here are the important instructions for importing the data. Okay, So it's going to tell you how that process is going to occur. Step one is we're going to select the file we wish to import. Now when I do that, it's going to automatically show me in my racist folder all my files. And sure enough, there's my CSV file that I want to load in. So I'm going to select that and say open. When I do that, it's going to show me a preview of that file. And in fact, what it's doing is telling me how many columns exist. And it's even going to tell me field one or column one contains Bill. Field two is Bowers. That's probably Bill Bowers. And it's going to show me some other information. Not only that, but Jaguar is going to automatically determine which columns contain names, age, gender, city. I can override that and I can change that if I want to. But Jaguar's taken a stab at it. It looks like it got it right. It says, yep, these are the fields that you're about to load in. And it's automatically determining that for me. Again, you can override it. Now, notice something that's really important. While Microsoft Excel will use column A, B, C as its designation, we use numbers. And the reason is that other programs other than Microsoft will use numbers as well. So we use the universal standard of 1, 2, 3. So column Column A in Excel would be, in fact, column 1. Uh, column B would be column 2. So you get the idea. So we're just using numbers here to designate the columns we want to import. Once we've done that, we can essentially click on the Start Import button. Before I do that, though, I want to show you a couple of settings down below. You have the option to save these settings. So if you have a race series that you're timing, you might want to set up the import criteria. Then you can save the settings, load them later, make it very quick and easy to bring the new data for each race into the system. OK, in this case, I'm going to say I want to start the import. It says, you sure you want to do this? Yes, I'm sure. Does your file have a header with column labels in the first row? As a matter of fact, it does. We have those he that header information. By the way, I said a moment ago, you really wanted to have that there. Why? Well, when we were in the Excel file, we wanted to make sure that was there because that actually helped Jaguar figure out on import which columns belonged where. 
it saved us a lot of time. That's why we have that header up there. But we don't want to load that in the database because that's not a participant. So we're going to say, yes, there's a header. Jaguar will automatically remove it. It already processed the records. It brought them into the database. And if I quit out of the import screen, you'll now see that on my database screen, I have all of my records. Now you'll notice that we brought it in very quickly and we're looking at it on the main Jaguar screen. But let's go into the full database view. To do that, I'm just going to select View Database and Memory. It's going to bring up the database screen as we see here. And this is where we're actually going to work with the database uh, every time we need to make an edit or any kind of a change. And in fact, I can come in here just like an Excel spreadsheet and I could type in, you know, Kurt Hansen wants to do the race. I could scroll all the way over and you'll see there's a number of columns for split, adjustment, finish. Don't worry if you're thinking, wow, that's a lot of columns because in the defaults, which is one of our other training modules you'll be taking soon, you'll be able to learn how to set up the defaults so that you don't have to show the columns on the screen that you're not interested in. Okay, So you can actually change those settings. So I could also come in here and change the data, work with the data, add more people if I wanted to. And then there are a number of icons and buttons down here that allow you to work with your database. Now it's very important that you remember it's just sitting in memory. I have not saved it yet to the disk drive. Let's not get confused. The CSV file that we imported from, that's not a Jaguar database. That's a raw file that came from the race director. We now need to save the Jaguar formatted database out to the disk. So I'm going to select Save Database. And when I do that, it's going to pull up a listing in my races folder again. Notice I always use a folder that's uh, obvious to me. And I put all my files in there so it's easy to find them on race morning. And then you'll notice here's one that says Chesterfield Race Database. Well, I just saved that a while while ago. Let's call this one Chesterfield Race Database 1. I'm going to use a version number so I can keep track of my changes. Now that I've done that, it says seven records were written to the file, and that's good. That means all of my data is now in a Jaguar formatted database. And guess what? A Jaguar database is nothing more than a CSV file. So when we wrote this out to the disk, we wrote all of these columns with commas between each column. That means that I could actually take that file right now that I just saved out of Jaguar. I could pull it into Excel. I could edit that file, make any changes I needed, and I could bring it back into Jaguar. So it's very convenient. Jaguar databases are designed when we save them so that you can work with them in other programs. The last thing I want to show you on the database screen itself is the help option. If you should get confused or lost, all you have to do is click on the help button and then you can come in here and you can scroll up or down, you can change the size of the window, and you can take a look at all the online help that's available to teach you how to use the database. Okay, so you see how easy that is to import our data or type it in directly if we want to. Let's take a look at another way that we could get the data into our system. Under Race Info, there's a rapid registration feature, and that'll allow us to also type data into the Jaguar database. So what I could do is come in here, and perhaps I have some manual paper registrations that came in three days before the race. So Kurt Hansen wants to do the race. We type in his name, we put in an age, you get the idea, the gender, the division, save registration, and he goes into the system. So I have the ability to quickly uh, put people into the system by simply using uh, rapid registration. And in fact, typically you'll use this on race morning to get information into your database just before the race starts. Okay, now let's take a look at the last way to get data into the database. I'm going to select the database option again. I'm going to come down and I'm going to select import registration data from One Stop Race. Now most of you should know, but perhaps not all, that we have an online race registration service called One Stop Race. It's available worldwide and it's a wonderful service that allows people to set up their races at no charge. And in fact, as timers using Jaguar, you can offer the service to race directors. It doesn't cost them a penny. The registration fee that the athlete pays is less than most of the industry competitors. And not only does it make it easy, but you get a commission on every single registration. So it's a great way for our timers to make money. It's a wonderful tool for race directors. And probably the best feature of all is if you use One Stop for your registration, we will automatically download the data for a given race right into the Jaguar system. 
All I have to do is essentially come into this feature. I've typed in my login and password, which, by the way, anybody can set up. You can go out to One Stop Race right now. You can actually set up your own account, just like I've done. I'm using a test account. Now, once I want to retrieve my data, I just click on Retrieve All Events. You'll notice that it automatically fills in all the upcoming races that I'm going to be timing that are in the system. And all I do at that point is select the particular race that I want to download the data for. As soon as I click on Download Participants, it will automatically download the data into the system. It tells me how many records are processed. And as you can see right here, I have the records that have gone in to the Jaguar system. So. Working with databases is quite easy. Just remember, a Jaguar database is nothing more than uh, an Excel spreadsheet. In other words, if you look at our screen, it looks just like Excel. It's not actually Excel, but we've designed it to look like that because most people are familiar with spreadsheets. It means you can edit any of these cells and work with them any way you need to. You can save this back out. You can load them. You can merge multiple databases together so that if you have multiple timing points and you want to bring all the data together on one PC, that's not a problem either. The database is very simple, and when we save it as CSV, you can turn around and load that into something like Microsoft Access, perhaps SQL Server, or just a spreadsheet program. Again, you can type information into the database directly. That's certainly one option. Or I could do rapid registrations. I could bring it in that way, perhaps on race morning. And finally, what I could also do is I could come in here, and I could say I want to import my registration data from one stop, or I want to import my registration data from a CSV or text file. So that concludes our training on how to set up and work with databases. Look forward to seeing you in our very next seminar.